uh, before we get started, any questions about the general assignment? I had one student a while ago told me I haven't really talked about it that much, and I just kind of stared at her for a little bit because I feel like I talk about it every class. And there's stuff posted on Blackboard. If you have questions, let me know. Does anybody have any questions about the journal assignment? Some of you have already turned those in. Um, I will put a spot up in Blackboard for you to turn that in. Um, but once you turn in that spot, on Black if you already turned it in, I've already given you points for it, leave it alone. Uh, but when I, when I create a spot for you to turn that in through Blackboard, um, again, if you've already submitted and you already got points, I don't need you to do that. Okay, I will, I will transfer in Blackboard the points from the, the um, grade call. Brain fart there. Um, but if you have questions about the journal assignment, email me. But before you email me, there are videos, there are rubrics, there are explanations on Blackboard. Look those over first. See if you can't find your answer and then let me know. Um, but nobody has any questions over the journal assignment. Okay, it is due that last week in April, 29th, uh, by Friday, so turn that in uh, by then, you have until then, I would not wait until the last minute, okay. Uh, what about the receipt assignment, any questions over that? Yep. Some of you have already turned that in, you've sent multiple emails and I've responded. I don't get it. We'll stay after class and we'll talk about it. Um, Moving forward, so we've gone over chapter 10. We talked about obesity and the, and the uh, epidemic that we have there. What percentage of adults are considered overweight or obese? 42. 42. What about children? 18. 18 and a half. What's a healthy BMI? 18.5 yeah. and 24.9. Yeah. Okay, uh, 19.25. If you can remember that, that would be helpful. What about the hormone that sends a signal to our brain telling us we're hungry? Grayland. Grayland. Remember what we talked about? What sound does our stomach make when we're hungry? A growl. Grayland. <laughs> Grayland is the is the uh, hormone that does that. What about the feeling of fullness? What is that? Satiety, Set, remember satisfaction, mm. satiety, okay, uh, the feeling of fullness when our body, and the feeling of fullness when we're eating. So moving forward, we introduced nutrition for a lifetime, okay, we talked about uh, the prenatal period, when, when, what is considered the prenatal period? Between conception and birth. Yes, between conception and birth. Very good, Catherine, between conception and birth. What is lactation? Um, breastfeeding. Uh, milk production for breastfeeding, yes. Milk production for breastfeeding. Uh, moving forward, we talked about, so conception occurs when the moment a male sperm cell enters a female cell. Okay. Um, I don't need you to know preconception period, uh, but I want you to know conception when that happens. Okay, when planning a pregnancy, both Women and men should consider adopting a lot healthy lifestyles that include consuming nutritional adequate diets, achieving maintaining a healthy BMI, avoiding harmful drugs, and exercising regularly. Well, this says men also. He gives healthy sperm. Well, this is after it does. It does help produce healthy sperm for sure. Uh, alcohol, we know that it has a big role in um, restricting. Our body's ability to to absorb nutrients um, it can impact our pregnancies. It can have a if we drink too much of it, it has a negative impact on our health. Along with illegal drugs, okay, they can interfere with production of healthy sperm and reduce sexual functioning. Uh, but when when planning a pregnancy, both men, when both women and men should consider adopting healthy lifestyles. The prenatal period we talked about that a little bit. Um, what is the female reproductive organ that protects the developing organism? Um, uterus. Uterus. Very good. Uterus. Okay. I would be more concerned if uh, you women did not know that. Okay. 
Guys, I had a, last class I had a guy answer that first before the women did. Um, the mass of cells buries itself into a nutrient-rich lining of the uterus. What comes first, the embryo or the fetus? Embryo. 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 The fetus does not become a fetus until after eight weeks after... Does not become a fetus until eight weeks after conception. <coughs> we know that it involves three trimesters. Okay, remember we watched this video. The free, the free between almost week three to week 16... There's a lot of development going on there. High risk development. Central nervous system, heart and lungs, eyes, ears, teeth, genitalia. Uh, that's one. That's why we don't do gender reveals until usually after week 16, usually week 18, something like that. Um, of course, depending on whether you're, how the baby's position can interfere with identifying that. Uh, but the fetus's organs continue to grow and mature in their ability to function at week 30, 32. Baby is fully developed, um, and you will, you will gain, women will typically gain about a half a pound a week just in baby alone at that point. Birth weight, what's a low birth weight? Below 5.5 five pounds. Five. Below 5.5, very good. Uh, nutritional related signs of pregnancy. What's the first thing that we usually identify being pregnant? It's morning sickness. Morning sickness. Woo. Does that always happen? No. Ooh. Some people don't get it. They lucky. Like Any of you moms never had morning sickness? Yeah. Doesn't happen very often. What's that? My second and third one I did. You did the second and third one you didn't? Um, were they both the same sex? All of them are. All of them are. That's weird. Because usually what I, 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 I say that's weird. We know that our bodies go through change. Well, not our bodies. <clears throat> there you go bodies. again. Women's bodies. Uh, women's bodies go through physiological changes, such as increased blood volume, breast size, and levels of hormones. These adaptations enable her body to nourish and maintain the development of the embryo and the fetus, as well as produce milk for her infant after its birth. They can become discomfort for pregnant women. Okay. Breast changes during pregnancy, hormones signal the breast to increase in size and preparation for lactation. Mother's pituitary gland in the brain produces prolactin. Remember that, a hormone that stimulates the, the development of milk producing tissue in the breast. It does not produce milk, uh, mainly because of the high levels of progesterone. Now what happens when after you have a baby, that progesterone jumps off a cliff. And then there are other, uh, so we have the prolactin to help develop the milk producing tissue. And then there are other hormones that we will talk about that allow the quote unquote let down of milk into the breast so that it's available for, for the baby. Common sign of pregnancy is morning sickness, uh, nausea that's sometimes accompanied by vomiting. Doesn't always have to happen in the morning. Okay, it can occur any time of the day. It can occur all day long. Uh, but we know the physiological changes that a, that a woman's body goes through can impact, um, can possibly and negatively impact the development of a child. Yeah. When we talk about morning sickness, how do we battle making sure that mom gets enough nutrients for her and for baby? What's that? Prenatal. Prenatal help with that, sure. But as far as eating habits, what do you think that? Uh, how would we? How would we combat that? How would we? How would we fight morning sickness to make sure that mom is getting enough Before you meat? wake up, you need to eat some saltine crackers. It helps. That is a very common um, suggestion. Is to, Well, in WIC, we had a flyer that had all these things listed out to help combat some of the, some of the problems that are associated with pregnancy. We'll talk about constipation here in a minute. Um, but morning sickness, uh, it, you know, it, it's hard. Um, but a lot of the suggestion is... Well, Wick. Wick suggests keeping crackers or toast beside your bed. I mean, I don't know who does that. Who, anybody eat crackers or stuff in your bed? It makes for an uncomfortable sleeping, in my opinion, because then you get in your... But the whole point is making sure that you're waking up at least putting something in your body. It doesn't have to be extremely sustainable. It doesn't have to be a big breakfast. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to provide some, some kind of nourishments to help battle the morning sickness. Because is it good when you're pregnant? Let me back up. Is it good to not eat in general? No. 
Hey, how what kind of impact do you think that it has on fetal <coughs> development when you're not able it to eat? It makes them not be developed, the birth weight and the... I mean, yeah, it doesn't develop right. Sure, sure, because it could. Malnutrition. Yeah. Like it's supposed to eat for two, right? Mm -hmm. No. Not, not quite eat for two. I think that's where we get into the trouble of the excess weight gain. We're going to talk a little bit about that today, with, like as far as what are healthy weight gains. But I think more importantly, when we talk about you know bat combating or fighting this morning sickness, just eating something it doesn't have to be a meal. It could be a tablespoon of peanut butter. Um, it could be a, a small glass of milk. Something um, is better than nothing. Because here's what's going to happen when you're when you're not able to eat. And provide for you and baby. What is your body going to do? Get fatigued. Gets just weak. Use the store. Yes, it breaks down your resources to provide for baby. The baby's going to get what it needs from him. The, the baby is going to get what it needs from what, mom. What do you think about ginger tea? Ginger tea? Um, I think there's some benefits to, to now as far as it like related to pregnancy or just in general. For, um, I've I've not heard that. I can do some research. Has anybody ever heard that? Yes, they got ginger um, suckers, morning sickness suckers. It has ginger in it, and you suck one. You get them from a I mean pregnancy store. They're the little... pregnancy stores. Okay. Like, I don't get pregnant, so I don't go <laughs> shop at these things. Yeah, I do think they've come up with something like. Yeah, there's little suckers. It has yeah, ginger in it, that. and you suck on them, and. Before yeah. you get out of bed, and it keeps you from getting morning sickness. It helps so much. So I, I just take a couple, like a. Sucker. How many licks does it take to get to the About center of the Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop kind of thing? <laughs> I, don't I just know. take a couple licks and then like I lay my little... sucker back down by my bed, or do I finish it while I'm in bed? Just finish it. It's just a little bitty old thing. Oh, a little sucker. bitty. Oh. I'm more worried about you falling asleep with a sucker in your mouth and choking it. <laughs> <down. laughs> well, I'm just saying, they had them break this. I've not heard that. But, but I think more importantly, what it. And I'll do some research on that because I, I you know, if, if we're always looking suckers. for ways, we, we sometimes, doctors provide ad, um, Zofran to moms that are have sickness. Yep. At, um, they call it pregnancy pops. I guess oh. they, you buy those right beside the tequila suckers with the worms they, in them too? Well, you can get them at Walmart. They got them. Interesting. Uh, but it's furthermore, eating smaller but more frequently meals, kind of talked about that, nutritious snacks and maybe heckle. Products that contain ginger, such as ginger oh, tea, can God. also relieve the nausea of morning sickness. Sitting right here. So I guess go buy you some suckers. I don't need none. So say so you get more of a sickness, but you also have your cravings. Hmm. So does that I don't kind of know. Like I don't know that the cravings. I can't. So again, I've never been pregnant. I do have two boys, um, but the, they were both very different. Um, the oldest, his mom did not crave. Foods she craved smells. Yeah. So instead of instead of us, you know, um, instead of running to the store and buying pickles and ice cream or whatnot, as long as she didn't come home with a new pair of shoes, she could go into any shoe store she wanted to and smell them. Because that's what she, she craved. A smell. Oh my god. Oh. We've already identified that pregnancy physiologically changes a woman's body. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I could go in a restaurant when I was pregnant with my little girl, but remember, I was pregnant with triplets, and I did not yet. But I smelt tea brewing in the back room and throw up. The smell of tea made me so sick. So I would suggest not being in a room when someone's brewing tea before you eat. No, I mean, I can go in a restaurant and smell they made it. The sm I mean, it was like, Egh. So restaurants weren't your favorite place to go? No, no, no. no okay. No. Um, but morning sickness persists beyond the fourth month of pregnancy yeah. should also be brought to the attention of the physician because that's pretty important. Excess and vomiting has harmful, is harmful because of dehydration, weight loss, electrolytes. We're going to talk about the healthy weight gain here in a second. Uh, but fatigue. Oh. I'm tired all the time. All I want to do is sleep. Why? Because Wouldn't it be better to know why those things are happening? Do they last your whole pregnancy? Yeah. Not usually. Usually in the first tri 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 trimester, <laughs> right? But why does that happen? Because you're not eating enough. And you're not Probably eating. contribute to some of that, sure. And you're sure. not getting exercise and you're not, I mean, and your body's like draining all your 
resources from you is making you tired. I think that all that could definitely play a role, but it also, uh, remember we talked about in a pregnancy when um, these changes that happen, okay, we know that uh, breast in increase in size, we know that there's a large increase blood volume, so when we talk about blood volume, what mineral do we know that's affected that in that impacts iron. Iron. iron? Very good. I didn't even have to finish the question you where I was going. Very good. So when the mother's blood volume expands approximately 150% above normal, red blood cells, however, increases by only 20 to 30%. So, so essentially the volume, the, the concentration of iron is lower, which means our body's not able to transport oxygen through the, to the muscles appropriately which results in fatigue. As red blood cell numbers increase, expectant mothers report having more energy, especially during the second trimester. What is edema? We've talked about this quite a bit. We've been tested over it twice now. Water retention. Edema is water retention. Does that happen when you're pregnant? Oh, yes. Unfortunately, women, that happens even when you're not pregnant. Yes. Okay? Something that you guys battle all the time. Uh, but high levels of certain hormones can cause various tissues to retain fluid during pregnancy. Although the extra fluid causes some minor swelling, especially in the hands and feet, the condition is normal. In most cases, mild edema does not require treatment, such as restricting salt intake or taking diuretics. However, can be a sign of trouble if hypertension and the appearance of protein in the urine accompany the swelling. Uh, my, this was after my oldest was born, but my uh, we were discharged back home and uh, his mom was was having problems breathing so we took her back up to the hospital and they gave her Lasix, a diuretic. Yep. In a matter of minutes she was able to um, release like two liters of fluid off of her body. Um, digestive tract discomforts during pregnancy. Certain hormones produced by the placenta relax muscles in the digestive system. Uh, making it difficult to pass through the, the track or slows it down. Uh, in WIC, along with the crackers and the fresh air, and just how to combat, how to, how to fight morning sickness, we also have suggestions on how to uh, relieve uh, constipation. So what, do we, what would we consider relief for constipation? Fiber, what else? Oh, and water. Fiber and water, yep. Fiber and water. And physical activity. Okay, and physical activity. Heartburn is another common complaint of pregnant women. As the fetus grows, the uterus pushes upward on the mother's abdominal cavity and applies pressure to her stomach. Uh, and this allows stomach acid to enter the esophagus, causing heartburn. Um, we've talked a little bit about that before. So, looking at these dietary recommendations. Women of childbearing age should take steps to ensure good health before coming pregnant. What, what's the first thing that we've talked about that you should be doing as long as you're in the reproductive acid. ages? What? Folic acid. Folic acid. Yeah. Folic acid, or at least a prenatal. Prenatal. Okay, at least a prenatal. Prior to pregnancy, sedentary women begin exercising. Begin an exercise regime. Overweight or obese women can lose some excess weight, and women who smoke can join smoking sensations. Those are all good general dietary recommendations. Uh, time, uh, the time to remedy faulty lifestyle practices and increases chances of having a healthy pregnancy and a baby is long before pregnancy occurs. So when we look at this, there are certain times that uh, we know that we have a, a new fetus, new tissues, new red blood cells. Does that require an increased need of calories? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the baby needs calories. Sure it does. How much? Well, in that first trimester, there's not any. We don't provide any extra calories. But as we move into the second trimester and third trimester, about four to five hundred calories is what is expected that you should be getting in, addition to what you were already doing. Okay. Now the key is, did you even know how many calories you needed before you got pregnant? Because most of us in here didn't even know how many calories we needed until we started practicing that in here, right? Right. Uh, but proteins, proteins change, other vitamins change. Obviously, these are all important for good fetal development. 
in the first trimester, a pregnant pregnant woman's daily energy requirement is essentially the same as non-pregnant woman. But as the fetus grows during the second, third trimester, so does the required energy needs spent to support its growth as well as her own body's needs. So folate and iron needs, we've, we've talked about that quite a bit. Um, the importance of those things, menu planning. Spend a little bit of time, uh, last section, talking about this. Menu planning, because we, sh we shouldn't just menu plan when we're pregnant. We should menu plan every day to be prepared for the moments that we are hungry. But more importantly, uh, I can tell you right now, John, Aaron, and, um, dang it, I forgot his name. Owen, Easton, Easton, oh, that's Oaks. You guys don't have to worry about this, but for women... When we talk about making sure we're getting the right amount of nutrients, especially during that first trimester, this is not going to be easy. Especially if there's morning sickness. Take breath. Complication. What's that? Oh, complication during pregnancy. I had one. So. You had complications? Yeah, I had to talk with like dietitian and all this all the time. To, to gain healthy weight? Yes. Yep, yep. I had to take a program. Before I got pregnant, I had, I mean, it took me before I actually did a procedure six months before to I mean, because they want you to be healthy, they want you to start prenatal vitamins, they want you to do all of this before you even start taking the, the IVF drugs to get more eggs. To oh, like, sure. They want your body in an optimal position to accept yes. the eggs and to, mm -hmm. to carry out the pregnancy. Absolutely. So uh, it was six months before. I had to take vitamins, I put me on vitamins and birth control. And and then after that they stopped the birth control five days after I started my shots. So it's interesting how how just the different methods um, that we're able to do this, but we I mean this this is important here. But it's a loss of a lot of food. Is is weight a good conversation piece for women? Not during pregnancy. Not ever. Ever. You don't talk about the weight. Exactly. <laughs> I don't see it. I don't see it being good. Well, but personally, for me, that, for me to say my weight to somebody doesn't bother me if somebody asks me. But I get a lot of people are sensitive about it. You know why? There's, you know why I feel like they're sensitive about it? Because society puts so much pressure um, on what we should look like. Yes. The whole body shape. And all. No. Be be happy in your own skin. Okay, uh, when we talk about eating and planning for those things, there are good foods to choose from, there are foods that we should stay away from. Fish is safe to eat, during, or is fish safe to eat? Pretty, some of it. Um, there are good sources of many minerals, especially those omega-3 fatty acids and high-quality proteins. We've talked about that. but And now we have mentioned this before. Most fish and shellfish contain small amounts of methylmercury, a compound that contains a toxic mineral mercury, certain kinds of fish, however, contain higher levels. During WIC, we would tell moms, hey, well, we weren't really worried about it, especially here in Arkansas and Missouri, because we don't eat a lot of swordfish or shark or king mackerel, um, marlin, orange roughy, big eye tuna. I mean, it, I'll ask this question. How many, when was the last time, how many of you have eaten fish in the last week? About a quarter of you. Maybe half, which is pretty good, way better than the first class. Uh, but during pregnancy, when we talk about eating fish, you're allowed 12 ounces of catfish, pollock, um, canned tuna, or salmon. You're allowed those things. But any wild caught fish coming from the ocean, you should stay away from because of the mercury. Mercury is stored in our brains. Can cut, can lead to developmental delay, uh, delays. Uh, but if how many of you remember the thermometers used yes. to have mercury in them, and they they quit doing that because of the complications. So what about the cravings? Should we just give in to them, <laughs> guys? You should. Okay, if your significant other is pregnant and she says I want something. Just get right. it. Yeah, go mm -hmm. right, 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 right. There's your physical activity. The stereotype of a pregnant woman who craves pickles and ice cream is not simply a myth. Cravings are common during this stage of life. However, ask pregnant women to identify the foods they crave and you're likely to get a variety of responses. 
The causes of craving, cravings are unknown and may be responsible to the hormonal changes associated with the pregnancy or the emotional state of the mother-to-be. Specific food cravings may simply uh, reflect the woman's pregnancy, uh, women's family traditions. Unless food cravings contribute to excess weight gain, they are generally harmless. I My craved ramen noodles, you know, the ones in a cup like that. You have the dehydrated stuff with tuna and Velveeta cheese and sweet peas mixed all together. It's unique and interesting. Somebody the other day or earlier mentioned, do you still eat it? No. Oh, well, yeah, that's not as delicious anymore. <laughs> same, same thing this mom, the uh, mom told me was that she craved, it was a sandwich with grape jelly and something else on it. It was from McDonald's and, they, and she would put those things on there um, and she actually said, she went back and tried that because she remembered how good it was, and it wasn't very good. Um, and, you know, and what I try to tell moms, especially when they come in, go ahead and eat those things. If you're craving them, enjoy it. Right? Don't deny yourself. But here's the key. Don't eat the whole gallon of ice cream and the whole jar of pickles in, the same, in one sitting. Okay? Spread it out. Make sure we're watching the portion controls because we're going to talk about weight gain here in a second and how that's important. When we talk about food cravings, it's not always about foods. I have seen people eat chalk. Chalk? Laundry starch? Yeah. Cigarette ashes? Soil? Or all practice uh, practice of eating non-item foods called pica. Now, it says some women develop that. Um, I would imagine some men do too, to a certain extent. This doesn't, pica is not necessarily related to pregnancies, but it happens that way often. We, we talked about My Strange Addiction, uh, the TV show where they, somebody was eating, um, what's somebody eat. say? What's that, what? They eat, eat, eat all kinds, of, like it? insulation. Yeah. But I don't think that that's related to this. Oh, I, I think that there's something going on. Like an <laughs> eating no, I'm, I'm not going to disagree with you. <gasps> Uh, I, because I don't think that they're doing it because their body's deficient, which is what pica is. Okay, when they eat starch, chalk, cigarette ashes, soil, iron, chalk has uh, uh, phosphorus in it, which our body, which we can get from those foods, and our body knows that. So is it worse, say, a pregnant woman with really bad OCD, she just like, I don't know, the OCD is really intensified, that's why maybe some pregnant women. I think it's a contribution to poor, healthy, poor, poor health status in the beginning of the of the pregnancy. Poor health nutrition may be related to the morning sickness. You know, they're not not getting what the body needs. We know that when we've already identified when your body doesn't get what it needs, it, it's going to break down your resources to provide for baby. Right? Well, I don't have enough iron. I'm going to eat dirt because that's a good place for iron to come from. Your body just knows that. Um, but we put, we ask that question a lot in the initial interview. Um, pregnant moms when they come into WIC, are you eating any non-food items? Most of them laugh. Are you serious? Yeah. What do you mean non-food items? You mean like candy? No, no, no. Like paper, hair, laundry detergent, chalk, dirt. And they laugh again. Doesn't happen very often, but listen to your body. If you're craving these kinds of things, that's not normal. That's not normal. Some studies have linked pica with iron and zinc deficiency, but it's not clear if pica is the result or the cause of such deficiencies. Um, I would imagine, I don't think normal people, in health, I mean healthy people don't eat these things. So it's either... Mental people? Me, me, uh, mental. Mental. <laughs> they got mental problems. Either it's mental and it's not related to a deficiency, it's more of a something else. I don't know what you would even call it, psychological something. But pica. No, that's what happens. So weight gain, not an easy conversation to have, guys. I'll tell you that. Sitting in a wick room with a mom that's pregnant, maybe she's emotional. We're going to talk about some sensitive things here. We're going to talk about weight gain. Easton, Aaron, John, if a woman asks you if she looks fat in this, just redirect the question. Okay? Do not talk about their weight gain. Only talk about their weight loss. Those are going to get you some brownie points. But when we look at 
recommended weight gain for pregnancies. Aside from how we feel about the BMI, we know that it's not an accurate measurement of gender because it doesn't include gender and age and all those other things. But underweight, 18.5, you're expected to gain 28 to 40 pounds. I would challenge any of you girls in here, how many of you have ever intentionally wanted to gain 28 to 40 pounds? Now, maybe lose it. Well, I had to because, I mean, I had three babies. I gained 115 pounds. Yeah, those things change. I mean, you're, I mean you're, you're doing the in vitro fertilization. I think, you're, uh, it ju I, I think it just changes things. Um, healthy weight, 25 to 35 pounds. Overweight, less, less weight you're expected to gain. Now, here's a question. Recommendations are higher for women who are pregnant with more than one fetus. Okay. I don't know that 100 pounds would be that, but I, I think you are carrying triplets. I was underweight before I got pregnant. Okay. So, I, but the, the book, does, well, the recommendations are higher for women who are pregnant with more than one fetus. For example, a healthy woman who is carrying twins may gain as much as 54 pounds. So 14 more. So you only have 14 more, more pounds here. Okay. If you're just breaking it down. But... Should I had one one uh, mom tell me that they went to the doctor and the doctor actually gave them a meal plan and told them that they needed to lose weight. Well, maybe she was already fat. Um, okay, point taken. Maybe she was already overweight. Did either one of these say to lose weight? They're still gaining weight. They're still gaining weight. So, so if my provider comes to me and says, oh, you're pregnant, you're overweight, I'm going to put you on this weight plan so that you lose weight so you become healthier. No. Not well, during pregnancy. Not during a pregnancy. Absolutely not. Why? Because you're taking, you're not gaining a necessary weight you need for the child to be healthy. If you're losing the weight, that means you're losing the weight for the child and the weight for you. So you're restricting your calorie intake. Yes, you're Most restricting. Most likely, yeah. That's not... My suggestion is to go get a second opinion. Because when you're pregnant, young ladies, you should not lose weight unless unless it's a unless it's a, a reflection of you changing your eating habits or your activities. Okay, in WIC, we have that often moms would come in. Okay, you know I would not. I don't. Obviously, I'm not sitting there and I don't say, "Wait, can you?" It's eight week pregnancy, congratulations, but you're a little overweight. Like, can you imagine how that conversation is going to go? She She's not going to listen to me. She's, she immediately put on her, I'm going to fight mask. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> hey, Lakin, congratulations on your pregnancy. Here's what I want you to understand. You're going to gain about 25 to 35 pounds. Okay? Right now you've gained six. And okay, we're going to talk about the, the rate at which we would like for you to gain weight, but... Moms should never be told to lose weight while they're pregnant. Maybe she used the wrong word. Maybe she said she was. No, bitter. that's what she said. The doctor gave her a menu that he, that she wanted that he wanted her to follow. Now she also admitted that she had type two diabetes. There you go. Or gestational diabetes, which changes things. That's me. Okay, you had type two diabetes. I when have gestational diabetes. I have to do blood, blood tests five times. Blood tests. For three months. Every day, five times. Control meal, and I have to talk to a dietitian every three days. Every three days. Well, they, they were concerned. I mean, they, which which gestational diabetes? We're going to talk about that here too. Um, but when we talk about this weight gain, if a doctor tells you that you should limit or restrict your calorie intake to lose weight to become a healthy pregnancy, how does that support the weight gain that you're supposed to have? It is weird. It, it is a little conflicting. And you being a pregnant mom, you, you want, hopefully you want a healthy pregnancy, um, but expected mothers who gain excess of weight are more likely to give birth to high birth weight. And that's where gestational, the large gestational age, 8 pounds, 13 ounces or more, okay, mm -hmm. Lar um, uh, high birth weight babies. Being able to modify how people eat so that they can gain a healthy weight or if they make changes, mom, Lincoln comes in, I'm eight weeks pregnant, I've gained a little bit of weight, but I want to make sure that I get at the right pace, how do I do that? A little at a time. 
And we want you to gain weight. Remember we already talked about week 30, 32, baby is fully developed, just gains about a half a pound a week just in baby alone. Well, you're going to gain five pounds of that last trimester. But if I'm restricting my, what kind of impact does that have on our, on the development of our child if I'm not, if I'm actively reducing my caloric intake? They don't weight when you have them. Now, if mom comes in and loses weight because she wants a healthy pregnancy, oh, I've, I've stopped drinking sodas, I'm eating more fruits and vegetables, I'm walking three or four times a week, and she comes in and I've lost weight, I'm okay with that. But i got to document that to make sure that, okay, you've lost four pounds, how are you feeling, what is that contributed by, oh, I'm changing how I eat and my physical activity, Okay, just as long as you're not restricting any foods, we want healthy weight gain. Uh, women should try not to lose weight while they are pregnant because calorie restriction may harm the fetus. Again, if your primary care physician is telling you that you need to lose weight, you are entitled to a second opinion or asking questions. We talk about asking questions in here all the time. So accounting for the weight gain, Two pounds of amniotic fluid. There's three and a half pounds from the placenta. There's 11 pounds from the fetus. Uh, 22 pounds, 23 pounds, 25 pounds, 29 pounds. 29 pounds just in blood, breast, uterus, fat protein, retained fluid. Kind of gives you an idea. Does that make you feel better now about gaining weight? Most of it's baby. Most of it is baby. And here's, here's that rate of weight gain that I was talking about. So Lakin comes in. Uh, she's right here. I said she gained 8 pounds. So she's probably a little bit above what, what's recommended at that point. But I'm okay with that. As a registered dietitian talking to pregnant moms, I'm okay with that. Why? If I'm above what's recommended, what, is that, what does that insinuate? What does that tell me? That you're eating healthy enough. That you're eating. That you're eating. Maybe you're not eating. healthy enough, yes. right? Maybe not healthy enough, but also in the wig, we also will ask them, hey, what was your pre-pregnancy weight? Well, I couldn't tell you what I weighed six weeks ago. And chances are, that's when you find out Women when you're can. pregnant. Women can. They keep up with their weight. Fair enough. But it gives us a starting point. But yes, I like it to be above what's recommended just because it tells me that mom's got a pretty good appetite. Um, now there are some risks, gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, but again I would much rather than be up here as opposed to being on the bottom side of what's recommended. Why is that? Because you're, you're not eating enough. Could compromise, yeah, could compromise the pregnancy. I will, I will, if I can give you any information on this right here, I can tell you that after the four or five years I worked in WIC, I could probably count on one hand how many times I've seen mom come in where they were supposed to and end where they were supposed to. It just doesn't happen, and that's okay. And I try to share that with my clients. I would rather you be up here, but if you fall down here, we're going to talk about ways to, just to increase good calorie intake to get you back where you need to be. Um, the importance of prenatal care is specialized to meet the health care needs of pregnant women. Uh, WIC uh, provides prenatal care. They come in and initially when they come into the clinic, they're pregnant for the first time or for the fourth time or whatever it is, we're still going to check their hemoglobin. That's the first thing we do. We're also going to measure their weight. We're going to ask them questions. But more importantly, one of the questions we ask, are you seeing a primary care physician? I mean, that's, that's beyond our capabilities of what WIC provides. Routine prenatal care includes measuring and monitoring the pregnant woman's weight. We do that as well. Blood glucose level we do, or and urine growth or uterine growth. We don't do any of that in WIC, but we monitor some of those other things. Uh, during pregnancy, it's important for a woman to decide whether she will breastfeed her baby or not. We're going to come back to that. Oh, not today, but this week we will come back to that. Um, why why that's important um, and what we should do, kind of preluded a little bit to that earlier, but gestational diabetes. This only happens during pregnancy. We tested over that our second celebration. Three types of diabetes. Gestational diabetes was one. 
Not ten percent of women, pregnant women, develop type two diabetes during pregnancy. That's what gestational diabetes is. <clears throat> that is not. Can gestational diabetes carry over after birth? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I was going to wait. My crickets. Told you that <coughs> the nine o'clock class said more for you guys. Uh, but yes, the diabetes gestational after mom has birth. Uh, it can become type 2 diabetes. Her fetus receives too much glucose, converts the excess into fat, thus women with this form of diabetes often give birth to high birth weight babies, 8 pounds, 13 ounces or above. I don't remember that being a test question, but um, that's I'll, I'll double check, make sure you guys know uh, what you need. But after birth, these infants often have difficulty controlling their own blood glucose levels and are at risk for becoming overweight as children. 18.5%. be interesting to see where that number is today. And it's weird that that is true because I delivered a couple of babies and she did have just actual, uh, but she had a high hypertension. I mean, it was, it was like in the 200s. So, you know, when we delivered the baby, it was 13.3 or something like that. Pounds? And the other one was that big as well. Yes. So I don't think the babies are really big whenever a mom has to go through gestational drugs. Sure. Like sure. And it's hard to deliver a baby with babies. But that, you know, this is one of the things that, you know. She had the baby or did they need a C-section? No, that's what she had. When she got the dad had to do C-section. Oh, okay. I was about to say, whew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, gestational, gestational diabetes, you know, it's something that we, that we monitor and take take serious um, efforts to, to help control? Did you have to take any kind of medications? No. Just control myself. They have to make a list of things and time I should eat, what I can eat, what I have to do, because I have a small. Well, well which contradicts what we're talking, because when you think about type 2 diabetes... You're talking about overweight. Yes. Visually, we're looking at an overweight person, but we're looking at you. But you're un, you were underweight. I was like this. I so, can a little bit, but everybody was so surprised. My doctor, I have two doctors, and you, and then we check again. To, yeah. To make sure you were pregnant. Yeah, I'm crazy. <laughs> she said it was crazy. Um, but but chances are you probably created gestational diabetes because you weren't eating enough. My my family history. My dad. Oh. It was really hard. I had to do blood test. Yeah, the prick your five finger. Five times a day for five. three months. Yes. And record all that. Yes. I, you know, we talk about recording those kinds of things, and I, and I think that, that that shows dedication by the mom or the individual that's able to record um, things like that and go back and show the doctor that they were, that they're trying to work on these things and they're recording those. Were you able to get your blood sugars under control? Yes. Good. That was fine. Yeah, I'm sure, you were. I'm sure you were. <laughs> so when we talk about the increased risk above gaining above what's recommended weight gain, gestational diabetes, but also hypertension, uh, gestational hypertension or preeclampsia, high blood pressure when you're pregnant, that's what it is. Um, how can we uh, fight that high blood pressure? Come on, what do we associate high blood pressure with? Oh, salt. Salt. Okay, so maybe maybe monitoring salt intake. What else? Exercise. Exercise can help with that. Very good. Yes, exercise. Maybe some medications. Okay, um, a couple different things that we can that we can do. Women who have high risk of pre preeclampsia are those who are over 40 years of age or obese, having a history of diabetes or hypertension, and are carrying more than one fetus. Did you have hypertension? Did you say that? You did? Yeah, and also, um, I gave birth early, and then my uterus, my placenta to the first baby grew to the, the uterus. So, they, I was trying, they wanted me to have them. I lost one at 24 weeks, and then I had two. But when I was given birth, they noticed then I had to go to the OR because the placenta was grown. I mean, it was grew attached to your uterus. Yeah, it grew to my uterus, and they had to. I mean, 
it was a whole messed up thing. They had to get it out because you can bleed to death and hemorrhage. And but and then there was another baby coming. And then it was just like a big old hot mess. I'm so like, you've been dramatic your whole life, right? Well, that caused a whole lot. I was I'm like, sure that. Like her skinniness before I got pregnant. But when you did IVF, you gained like 10 pounds just from the shots and stuff. And that's why they watch your weight before you get pregnant because the shots make you gain weight. And then when you get pregnant... Well, probably because if you're doing in, in, uh, in vitro fertilization and you being underweight, that's why the gain the weight, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I mean, it, pregnancy's complicated. There's no, you know, it'd be nice if we had a, a blueprint or some kind of user manual. These are the things, you know, kind of like our car, right? Mm -hmm. You look in the owner's manual, it tells you ex exactly when you should get maintenance done to your car. It'd be nice if we had something like that for our body, or at least mm -hmm. when we're pregnant, right? Um, but women suffering from preeclampsia develop seizures, uh, a condition called eclampsia. I just want you to remember the preeclampsia. Um, high blood pressure. Um, these preeclampsia and eclampsia are major causes of death among pregnant women. So very, very important. Exposure to drug and alcohol is harmful to the embryo and fetus. Women who drink alcohol during pregnancy are at risk of having a child with fecal, fecal, fetal alcohol <laughs> spectrum. I said that last time. When you guys week. just see a child that had drugs in the system or alcohol in the system, they, it is so terrible. The baby does nothing but scream and cry and shake. I'll, I'll, that wasn't my experience. We had a baby come in uh, in WIC, fetal alcohol syndrome, along with some drug dependencies because mom was a drug addict. baby was born in Walmart. Oh my God. Was born in Walmart. Uh, foster parent took care, uh, but he, baby didn't cry. Um, he he looked different. His his limbs and stuff were much thinner. Kind of had a, a little bit bigger head on his body, um, but he was very interactive. He smiled. And he was he was happy, um, but causes complications. You know, based upon the foods that we're putting in our body, or not, or or other. Things in our body. Scientists do not know if it's a safe, if there is a safe amount of alcohol that pregnant women consume. So we just say to stay away from them altogether. Um, physical activity. Uh, we know that physical activity has benefits during pregnancy: enhanced muscle tone, strength, reduced edema, improved mood and sleep. That's a big one. Most pregnant women can contain, can continue their pregnancy exercise regimes. We had a student earlier who's like. What about those that go to the gym and work out when they're, you know, six weeks or when they're 12 weeks or when they're 30 weeks? Recommended activities generally include walking, cycling, swimming, prenatal yoga, or light aerobics. Pregnancy is not the time to begin an intense fitness regimen or perform high-risk physical activities. Pregnant women should discuss their physical activity practices and needs with their physician. I think if you are pregnant... Um, whether you were already active or you want to become active, I, I, hopefully your physician is encouraging you to do that. If it's safe, because it does promote good pregnancies, good healthy pregnancy, right? I think more importantly, if, if you're looking for some kind of recommendation without going to the doctor, I'm just going to tell you to stop lifting heavy weights. There's nothing wrong with walking. Um, maybe in, well, the book talks about low to moderate activities. Uh, low to moderate intensity activities, flexibility, okay, just getting up and flexing, we've talked about that, what's, our body burns more fat in resting positions, right, so just stretches, activities that are risky should be avoided, um, I, we talked about hot yoga, I had a student that does that, I mean, I need to do yoga first before I try hot yoga. They even say stay little hot tubs. It looks like an accident waiting to happen right there. <laughs> downhill, uh, avoid it. Downhill skiing. Ugh. Are you pregnant? Your belly is front heavy. Not, not all the time. <laughs> I can see it. Um, definitely no contact sports like volleyball, soccer, basketball, horseback riding. I didn't know horseback riding was a contact sport, but apparently it is. Well, your butt can get thrown. No, I, I know, but... Be I mindful just, of those things. I used to do um, horseback riding before I got pregnant, but they do, they did tell me do not do it when I was pregnant. After a I certain mean, time period? No, I couldn't do it, period. I was on bed rest the whole time. That's where we will stop. Uh, we will pick up with...
10, we'll pick up 10.3 when we come back on Tuesday. Infant nutrition, talk about how to lose that body weight you gain during pregnancy.